Hey everyone, so I'm going to talk to you all quickly today about how to um, calculate total resistance in parallel circuits. So let's start with a circuit with a power supply. Let's call it a 5 volt power supply. And we're going to have two resistors here. But they're going to be in this configuration. We call this parallel because the current going through these resistors has to come out of the positive end then has to split and go into both resistors separately and then join up at the end and go to negative. Okay. So let's say this first one has a 10 kilo ohm resistance and this one has a 2 kilo ohm resistance. Okay. So this is called the current divider. We've talked before about a voltage divider. This is a similar concept, um, but we've called, we've said before, sorry, that the current through a loop is constant. In this case, the current through the loop is going to split because we're not going through just one uh, loop. Through this entire circuit, this entire loop, this is still constant. We can call this I1. However, at this node, that current is going to be split we can say this is I2, and this is I3. This is Kirchhoff's current law, is that the current entering a node, the sum of the current entering a node, is zero. So if we have I1 plus I2 plus I3 equals zero. Okay, that'd be the current entering a node in that case. Sorry, so it would be like that, okay? With all arrows going into the node, I1, okay? To blow that up, we're gonna have a node here, I1, I2, I3, okay? So, in this specific case, we can usually tell, or we can tell in this case, that I2 is going to go this way, down, and I3 is going to go that way. Okay, so then we can say I1 minus I2 minus I3 equals zero. Okay, and from there we can simplify that to I1 equals I2 plus I3. So we can compute each of these, I2 and I3, separately using Ohm's law. So we know that V equals IR, Ohm's law, and we can find that I2 here is going to be V over 10 kilo ohms. 10 kilo ohms is from this resistor, okay? But this V, we don't, we have to figure out what that V is, okay? So that V is actually just going to be 5 volts because in this current dividing um, situation here with this uh, scheme, we have the voltage from here to here is going to be constant for both resistors. Okay, hopefully that's clear because um, because of their because they're in parallel, right? So up here is all one node and down here is all one node, so it's effectively going across both of them at the same time. Uh, the voltage would be five volts there. Okay, so this is five volts. So that gives us, what, 0 0.5 milliamps. So now we can calculate the current through I3 here. Similarly, I3 here is going to be 5 volts again, but now we're in this 2 kilo ohm resistor, 2 kilo ohm. So what does that give us? That gives us 2.5 milliamps. So now the total current, I, we called it I1 here before, that's going to be the total current, is I2 plus I3, which is 0 0.5 plus 2.5 milliamps. Point there, which is just 3 milliamps. So now we found the total current 
in the circuit. Let's find the equivalent resistance of the circuit. So you can find this in two ways here. The first way is just using Ohm's law because we know the total current and we know the total, the voltage, we can just use Ohm's law. So if V equals IR, uh, we can transform that and say R equals V over I. Okay, this is gonna be I1 in this case. And so this is five volts divided by three milliamps, which gives us 1.67 kilo ohms. Double check me there, I think that's correct. So we also have a formula for this. That formula I'm gonna put in this top corner is RT equals R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2, okay? And let's check that and see if this uh, actually gives us the same answer. Do I have space? I do have space, okay. So to do that, we can just plug it in. RT T equals R1, is 10 kilo ohms, times two kilo ohms, divided by 10 kilo ohms plus two kilo ohms, okay? So you can just solve that and that'll give you, look at that, 1.67, oh man, that's not a seven, six, seven kilo ohms, okay? The same answer. But what would happen if we added a third resistor here? Okay, so this one's two kilo ohms. Let's call this one one kilo ohm. What would happen? How would you solve this? Surely you can't just use this equation again. Well, I guess you can. And we can do that by doing two and then that total with the last one. Let me show you how we do that. RT is R1 plus R2. Well, I'm just gonna write them in here. It's easier that way. This is gonna be 10 times two kilo ohms divided by uh, 12 kilo ohms just to simplify a little. Okay, so that gives us 1.67 kilo ohms. Okay, and now we can treat that as our R1 for the next set. So that would be RT, call this one and two, is 1.67 times one kilo ohm divided by uh, 2.67 kilo ohms. What does that give you? Hopefully, yeah, it does. So that gives you 625 ohms, okay? So you can do it that way, but I find that way less good. Another way you can solve this problem is with the generalized equation that you can apply to any circuit with parallel resistors. So we can use the generalized equation, which is one over RT equals the sum from n is 1 to n, 1 over Rn. I mean, it's a little mathy looking, right? But in application, it's actually really simple. So for, here, for this example here, let's go ahead and solve that. 1 over RT is 1 over 10 kilo ohms plus 1 over 2 kilo ohms plus one over one kilo ohm, okay? What does that give you? We could basically just, you know, change the denominator, add them up, and you get 16 over 10 kilo ohms, okay? 
to take the reciprocal of that to get RT again. So what is it, RT? RT is 625 ohms. And this is what I call the better way to do parallel resistors. Have a good weekend, and I'll see you guys on Monday.